Hello friends, happy Wednesday. It is time for the next chapter of Judy Moody Saves the World. And the chapter is called Project P-E-N-C-I-L, Pencil. The next morning and the next one after that, Judy woke up feeling like a sloth moth. She could hardly make herself get out of bed. Saving the world was not going so well. She hadn't done anything really important, like heal the world with her own crazy strip. So far, she had only saved four banana peels, a lunch bag, and a toad. On Friday morning, Judy ate her no-garbage breakfast in silence. She packed her no-garbage lunch by herself. She didn't say a word when Stink stuck crazy strips all over his arms, elbows, knees, and chin. These crazy strips itch, said Stink, peeling off the one on his elbow. Judy couldn't stand it one more minute. If those were my crazy strips, said Judy, I'd be happy to itch. I would not scratch once, and I would never, not ever peel it off, not even in the bathtub. And there's our three swirlies. In school, Judy did not raise her hand once. She did not pass a note to Frank. She did nothing but chew her grouchy pencil all through spelling. She, Judy Moody, was in a pencil-snapping mood. Uh-oh. Hmm. When it was time for science, Mr. Todd took off his watch and said, I want everybody to sit still for 60 seconds. I'll time you. When the minute was up, Mr. Todd said, In that minute, 100 acres of trees in the rainforest were just destroyed. That's 70 football fields. No way, went through the class. We all depend on the rainforest, said Mr. Todd, for things we eat and wear and use every single day. Think about it. Even your wooden pencil and rubber eraser could be from the rainforest. 98% of the cedar wood used for pencils comes from rainforest trees. Judy stopped chewing on her grouchy pencil. She stared at it. The grouchy face looked even grouchier. This pencil used to be a tree, a rainforest tree. She, Judy Moody, would never, ever, what do you think the author's going to say? She would never, ever use a pencil again. Not even a grouchy pencil. If we can help save the rainforest, we help save the planet, said Mr. Todd. Suddenly, Judy had a plan. A perfect save the world plan. All she had to do was skip recess. When all the kids hurried outside to the playground, Judy sneaked back to the classroom. This was her big chance. Inside each desk was a pencil holder. Judy raced around the room and took the pencils from each desk. Then she hid them inside the flower vase. As soon as recess was over, it was time for math. Take out your workbooks, said Mr. Todd. Let's get those pencils working. Uh-oh, Judy thought. Hey, the pencil's gone. Mine too. Mine was right here. Mr. Todd! Mr. Todd! Somebody stole our pencils! The whole class was in an uproar. Okay, is somebody playing a joke? asked Mr. Todd. Nobody answered. Do any of you know anything about the missing pencils? Judy kept her head down and pretended to work out math problems. Brad looked at Judy. She was the only one not complaining about her missing pencil, and she was doing month math problems with a P-E-N. Pencil thief, Brad yelled, pointing at her. Judy Moody stole our pencils. Judy felt the eyes of 21 third grade pencil lovers turn to glare at her. Friends, you've shown me what a glare looks like before. Judy, Mr. Todd came over to her desk. What do you know about these missing pencils? <sighs> okay, I took them, Judy confessed, because I think we should stop using pencils. Stop using pencils? That's nuts, Brad said. To help save the rainforest, said Judy. Hmm. Class, what do you think? asked Mr. Todd. We just want our pencils back, said Leo. Judy could not believe these third grade pencil freaks. Were they in the ozone? Didn't they care that 70 football fields of trees a minute were being cut down? She wished they would all move to Pennsylvania. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? Pennsylvania, spelled like the word Pennsylvania. Oopsie. 
I think we should save the rainforest, said Frank. Me too, said Haley. Me three, Rocky said. Yeah, but we can't just give up pencils forever, said Randy. We have to write and stuff. Oh, sorry. We have to write stuff and erase, like in math. How can we save the world without math? Maybe we don't have to use so many, said Jessica Finch. One pencil can draw a line 35 miles long. We could all promise to use the same pencil until fifth grade. Friends, this reminds me. A lot of times, do you remember, sometimes in Group J, I would walk around and see you guys sharpening pencils like crazy because it wasn't perfectly sharp. I remember. Can you do a little bit of this if you remember? I remember saying, let's not waste the pencils. It will still write, even if it's not perfect, perfect, perfect sharp. Something to keep in mind. How did Jessica Fink Finch know so much about pencils? Maybe she wasn't such a Fink after all. How many pencils can you get from a tree? Judy asked. None, said Brad. Pencils don't grow on trees. Hardy har har, said Judy. I mean it. You can get a lot of pencils from one tree, for real. One tree can make 172,000 pencils, said Jessica Finch. I read it in my Ranger Rick magazine. Wow, one tree could make all the pencils in our school. All the pencils in Virginia. We could plant a tree in the rainforest then, said Judy. You know, for the Virginia Dare School, to make up for all the pencils we use. Ooh, Jessica said to the class, kids all over the world raise money to protect rainforests. It only costs a dollar to have one tree planted in the children's rainforest in Costa Rica. Well, if it only costs a dollar, Judy said, then we could send money for them to plant trees and our class can adopt them. Wow, everybody said, let's do it. Class, any ideas about how to raise some money? And by the way, friends, here is the two page spread illustration all around the margins. Isn't that cool? I'll show you some close-ups. <laughs> Any ideas about how to raise some money? Mr. Todd asked. How about a car wash? said Lucy. We could sell stuff, said Adam, like cookies. My sister put on a play in fifth grade and made money to help save the whales, said Jessica. She even won a giraffe award for it. A giraffe award? For somebody who sticks their neck out for a good cause. Judy could hardly wait till fifth grade. Maybe we could put on a magic show, said Rocky. Or we could collect a bunch of stuff to recycle, said Frank, and get money for it. The Recycle Center gives five cents each for pop bottles and milk jugs. Rare, said Judy. Double cool, said Rocky. A bottle drive sounds like a fine idea, said Mr. Todd. We could raise money while recycling at the same time. What do you say, class? Do you think we could collect enough bottles? Yeah, everybody yelled. It was settled. The Virginia Dare School, Class 3T, was going into the bottle business, starting with their very own cafeteria. The third graders spent the afternoon rounding up milk jugs from all over the school. They piled up plastic bottles from the kindergarten classes and from the teacher's lunchroom. They even rescued some from the trash. Class 3T worked as hard as an army of leaf cutter ants. That was cool how you got us out of math, whispered Frank. This is more fun than when you put my arm in a cast, said Jessica. We still need a ton more bottles if we're going to save the rainforest, said Rocky. Rocky's right, said Mr. Todd. Let's go home and see how many bottles we can collect over the weekend. Ask your family and neighbors. Tell your friends. Judy Moody felt as sharp as a pencil point. They were just a few days and a few hundred bottles away from saving the rainforest. She was in a Judy Moody best mood ever. At last, she was on her way to saving the world. And the best part was she was no, she no longer had to do it all by herself. Class 3T would save the world together, like an ecosystem. She, Judy Monarch Moody, knew just how a butterfly felt coming out of the chrysalis, light as a feather. Oh, love that. 3T is like three for grade three and Todd for Mr. Todd, kind of like 1J is first grade and Jaffe. Hmm. Friends, that's the end of that chapter. And the next chapter is called Batty for Bottles. That is alliteration. Some of us learned about alliteration last week in small groups. Okay, stay tuned.